So I'm going to try this again today. Yesterday I did not have a lot of luck. I uh, had some technical difficulties. So I'm going to be doing this again and hopefully everything will go as planned today. So today I'm going to be talking about the pre-birth plan. Obviously, you have to have a plan before you have a, a soul contract. So we're going to be talking about the pre-birth plan, um, what you got to, you know, what you do, who's involved, and things like that. So the pre-birth plan is a very important part, obviously, of the soul contract because you have to do your planning before you could actually do the um, soul contract part before you're born. So before you incarnate into this 3D world you're going to create a uh, pre-birth plan with your soul group, your soul family, uh, a council of elders, if you want to call them that, or you can just call them the council. Uh, your spirit guides are part of your family, your soul group family as well. And um, everybody's going to be present for this. So remember that you are also going to be part of the planning for other people in your soul group. So you're going to help in to create some soul group, you know, soul group family members with their planning, just like they help you with yours. So your uh, soul family and the council, you know, highly evolved spiritual beings, spirit guides, um, they're going to say, okay, what is it that you want to get out of this next incarnation, this next life? What do you want to work on? What do you want to learn? And you might also say to them, these are the things that I want to work on. Um, I know I have a, uh, an anger issue, or I know I have a patience issue, or I know I have an um, uh, acceptance issue, or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, there's lots of things that people work on. There's, there's, there's tons. We don't have to go through everything here, but, you know, those are some, those are some major ones that, that people do like to work on. Patience is a huge one. Unconditional love is a huge one. Anger um, issues is huge. S accepting and loving oneself, you know, there's there's tons. There's tons. So during this uh, meeting session, everyone's going to come together and you're going to create your pre-birth plan prior to incarnating into the physical world. So you're going to ask certain members of your soul group um, you know, I want you to be my mom. I want you to be my dad. Do you, do you guys accept that? Everybody has the option of saying, no, I don't want to be your mom or I don't want to be your dad. They might give you a, which they probably will give you a reason. Um, but they, yeah, they have the option to say, no, I don't want to do that. They do. Uh, you might ask them to be, uh, an abusive father, an alcoholic father, an absent father, uh, uh, you know, and the reason behind it, you're going to go ahead and say, I want you to be this kind of a father, a horrible father, because I want to see if I can rise above it. You know, whatever the case may be, I want to break a pattern. Um, I want to see how I'm going to turn out. I want to see if I do the right thing. You know, am I going to turn into that horrible father that you're going to be? Or am I going to say, you know what, I'm going to break this cycle. Um, I'm not going to be like that. There's always a reason why people will often ask, I would have never chose my parents. They were horrible. Why would I have chosen them? And um, unfortunately, you did. And if you don't understand why, that's okay. Um, once you cross the, the veil again and you are in spirit form, you're going to know why you did it. Either you will have turned out the way you wanted to, you know, either breaking the pattern or being a great parent yourself instead of being this crappy parent, or you're going to be a carbon copy of them. So whatever it is that you were supposed to learn from them, hopefully you did. Maybe you didn't. That just means that you're probably going to do this again. Um, you can choose as many things as you want to work on. That doesn't mean you're going to go, um, that you're going to do them all. It doesn't mean that you're going to pass every test or you're going to pass every class. Say you have 20 things that you want to work on and you only hit seven of them. That's okay. This isn't a race. You know, everybody goes at their own 
everybody goes at their own pace. This is what the pre-birth planning is for. It's like it's a summary of what your next life is going to be. That includes um, people that you're going to be in relationships with, um, people you know, people that you're going to marry, people that you're going to divorce, people that are going to piss you off, people that are going to push your buttons. You're going to assign these tasks to each of these people in your soul group, and they're either going to accept or they're going to say, no, I don't want to. Maybe next time. I don't want to play that role in your life this time. I, I'm not either. I'm not comfortable with it or, or I just don't want to do it. That's what, that's what they're going to tell you. So they have, remember, they have that option to say, no, I don't want to do this. So you're going to assign these people different tasks. You know, I want you to be my, my, my first uh, husband or my first wife. And, um, you're going to cheat on me and we're going to have a horrible divorce. And, you know, let's see how I'm going to turn out after all this goes down and you're going to cheat on me with you and you're going to be my best friend in this lifetime. Okay. And these are the kinds of things that are, that are planned out. Okay. Most of the major things that happen in your life, including whatever career you're going to have, um, if, you know, if you're going to have any children or, uh, you know, even your pets, your, your pets are part of your soul group, your soul family as well. So, like I said, you're going to assign these things, these tasks to people. You're going to be the one that pushes my buttons on a daily basis. You're going to be, if you accept, I want you to be um, one of my bosses in this next coming life. And I want you to be a horrible boss. You know, I want you to be a horrible boss. And they'll either say yes or they'll say no. So, remember, you're going to assign or you're going to ask people in your soul group to do certain things for you. And there's going to be a reason behind it. There's going to be a why. I want you to do this. And this is why. Do you accept? I really want to learn this lesson. Or I really want to evolve past this issue. I've had this issue for um, many lifetimes. Um, I'm not getting the hang of it. I, I really I want to do it again now in this next life. And... I want you to help me with it. Whether um, there's usually certain traits that people will always have in every life, like a, a I guess like a primary, like a primary trait. I guess whether it be a, your stubbornness, whether it be um, that you get angry easily, you know, certain things like that. There's going to be a primary trait that is usually carried on life through life. So. Uh, if it's something that you would consider negative, like you have a horrible, you have horrible temper. Oh my God, everything just freaking pisses you off. And it could be as easy as somebody taking these glasses, moving them from one place where you had them, moving them to another. And that just sets you off. You know, it sets you off. And this is part of your anger issue. We're just using that as an example. Believe it or not, some people do get pissed off when you move their shit, you know, and they go crazy. I've seen it happen. Um, so these people are going to be asked, you're going to ask them to do specific things or to play specific keys, key people in your life. All the major things are pre-planned. There's room for free will, of course. While you're living out your soul contract, of course, there's always some room for free will, but most of it is really is planned out. I mean, especially the major things that includes accidents, that includes the diseases that you're going to have, if you're going to have any at all, you know, some people, they live, um, to be 90 years old and have never had any major health issues. They've never had any surgeries, you know, just one day they go to sleep and they don't wake up. That's the way they planned it. Um, people that suffer from, from diseases, all kinds of diseases or disabilities. These are things that are, these are things that are, that are in your pre-birth plan. You say, okay, at the age of 75, I want to get, um, some type of cancer or whatever, or at the age of 25, um, I'm going to be diagnosed with, um, HIV. And sometimes part of what you're planning in your pre-birth planning session 
it's going to be intertwined with your soul group, obviously, because if you're picking this one to be your mom, you're picking this one to be your dad. You're saying, you know what? I want to learn from, I want to learn from this disease. Um, let, I'm going to be diagnosed with HIV. Um, and the person that's your dad says, you know what? That might be a good lesson for me because I really need to be accepting of losing a child early, you know, early in their life or whatever I need to, I want to experience what that's like. And through that, I'm going to help other parents that lose their kids. Okay. So that might come up in your dad's pre-birth planning when it's his time to do it. You, you see what I'm saying? You see how this is all, all this is connected. And this is also connected with your past lives as well. Okay. Remember every time before you incarnate, everybody gets together and everybody does a plan for the next life that's coming. So the things that you, that you did in a past life will, can be brought up. You might owe karma to somebody in your soul group. There's always karma that's owed, um, within your soul family, your soul group. And, um, sometimes people say, oh man, I've got such bad karma or man, they've got such good karma. Look at how everything always turns out great for them. It's not necessarily a good or bad karma. It's, it's what you would call balancing. Okay. It's like a debt system. So it's a balancing thing. So if you did something to me in a past life, I'm going to pay it back whether it be good or bad. And we will discuss this during my pre-birth planning, how we're going to handle it or, or what I'm going to do. So karma is not always, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Okay. Yeah. There's people that have a lot of crappy shit happen to them. And, um, there's a reason why it's because they planned it that way. Somebody might want to really uh, balance out a lot of karma in one lifetime. So they have all these not so great things happen to them or have um, difficult situations or are put in difficult situations with, with people in their soul group or whatever. And they're balancing, they're balancing out the karma. They're, you know, they're paying their debt or, or whatever. If you want to say you say you owe a lot of karma to different people and you're doing your planning and you say, you know what? I want to try to bang out as much of this as I can in this life. Um, let's set all these things up to happen. Bam, 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 bam. You might nail them all or you might only get half. It's not a race, you know, it's not a race. So when it's your time to cross a veil, when you die and you go back, there's, it's not really a checklist, obviously, but you know, the elders, council members, whatever, they're going to say, you know what? You got this one. You got this one. You got this one. You got this one. Oh man, good job. This one, not so good. This one, not so good. That's during your life review, but that's obviously that's when, when you die. So I'm trying not to get, to go all over the place with this. Cause you know, one thing's always connected to another, connected to another, connected to another. So I just want to stay with the pre-birth plan part of the soul contracts. Um, and you got to remember everything is recorded in the Akashic records, all your past lives, everything that's going on in the present, um, things that even haven't even happened in the future yet are in the Akashic records. So it's like, uh, the universal computer or the universal external drive. Okay. So once you're done with your pre-birth plan and you select who's going to do what to you, what kind of career you're going to have you know, all the lessons it is that you want to learn, whatever obstacles you're going to go through, whether again, whether they be good or bad, um, you're going to have your plan set and then you're going to reincarnate. Okay. And everybody has to agree to whatever specific task or whatever role they're going to play in your upcoming life. So if they say, no, I don't want to do it, then you got to respect their, their decision and say, okay. And then you just ask somebody else to do it. You know, you ask another spirit, a person, whatever you want to call them, if they will do it, you know, if somebody will say yes, they will. So this is all part of getting your plan together before you actually live out your soul contract. All the major things that are going on in your life, all the major things that have happened in your life, again, whether they be good or bad, 
were planned out before you were born in this pre-birth plan, okay? And I mean, this could get extensive. I don't know, obviously I don't know how exactly how long it takes to do the planning, but you're planning out a whole life, more or less. And remember, there is room for free will. There is absolutely room for some free will. But like I said, most of the major things, every obstacle, every good thing, every bad thing, these are things that have been predestined, predetermined, or, you know, however you want to call it. Um, let me see. So, yeah, you got to agree. And I guess, I mean, I guess that's it for now. So that's just part of the pre-birth, you know, that's the part of the actual planning of this whole contract. Everybody has to agree to certain things that they're either going to do, that they're going to do. I'm going to be the one, you want to be the one that pushes my buttons. You want to be my horrible father. You want to be my abusive mother, my alcoholic brother, or, you know, whatever the case may be. A lot of people think, why would I choose these things to happen to me? I hear that question all the time, all the time. I would never have chosen this for myself. And I tell them, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, but you most likely did. And you're not getting what you're supposed to be getting out of it. You know what I mean? You're not learning what it is that you're supposed to learn from it. And you, you might, you might never learn what you're supposed to learn from it, but you'll have a chance to do it again. Cause more than likely you're going to pick, um, you're going to pick the same thing over again because you didn't get it this time. You're not supposed to remember. People ask again. They ask, why don't I remember? Why don't people remember? Because you're not supposed to remember people. Once you cross the veil into the physical, it's called the river of forgetfulness or, you know, whatever you want to call it. You are, your memories are wiped, sort of. I mean, subconsciously, it's still there, but you need to know how to tap into it. You know, that's the thing. It's like finding a file on a computer. You got to find it. Imagine, imagine, okay, if you had access to every single life that you ever lived, all the languages you've spoken. Think about it. Your brain could explode. Um, so no, you're not going to remember. I mean, technically, how many languages do you think you know from other lifetimes? A lot, right? It's there. But you're just not tapping into it. So it's the same thing with this pre-birth plan and your soul contract thing. You're not supposed to remember because it's like getting the answers to a test before you take the test. If you had the answers before you took the test, then it would be pointless because you would absolutely be learning nothing. So think of it like that. When you're doing your plan, you set these people up, you ask these people to just do certain things for you so you can learn very specific things so you can evolve and, um, and you do the same for the people in your soul group. Okay. You're going to be involved in their pre-birth planning and their soul contract, and they're going to ask you to do certain things too. Okay. Everything's connected. Um, your bosses, the people that you marry, the people that you're involved in relationships with your children, your pets, everything. This is in your pre-birth plan that creates your soul contract. And again, there is some room for some free will. There is. So let's say in your pre-birth plan, you said, you know what? I either want to be a doctor or I want to be a, um, a chef. During out your life, you're going to go one way or another. Say you start leaning towards the doctor thing. Yeah, I really like being, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a doctor, but I really like to cook. That's not my example. I'm a horrible cook. Um, but anyways, so I want to be a doctor. I want to be a doctor. And then let's say you are a doctor for 20 years or whatever. You have your own practice and everything and you get tired of it. You know what? I really want to own a restaurant. I want to be a chef at my own restaurant. And then there you go. You leave being a doctor and you buy a restaurant. That can happen. Or you could just be a doc, you know, continue being a doctor. But the, I'm just using that as an example. There's, you, you know, there's usually a couple of options that you put in your plan. And um, you either lean towards one or the other. So 
the pre-birth plan is very important um, because that sets up your whole, you know, your contract. Again, all the major things that happen in your life, whether they be good, bad, ugly, people that piss you off, people that you absolutely love, um, pets, everything is in your pre-birth planning and things that you set up for your contract. So uh, in the next uh, video, I'll start talking about the actual contract part and be giving examples of certain things. A lot of people ask, uh, why would I choose this? You know, why would I choose this horrible life? Why would I choose these horrible parents? Why would I have chosen this to happen to me um, when I was 25 or 22 or 23 or, you know, or whatever? And um, we'll start getting into the actual uh, contract part. Like I said, a lot of people do not believe that they would choose certain things for themselves. And a lot of times you're not going to remember until you actually cross the veil again and you get on the other side and you have your life review and um, you go, oh my God, I totally did pick this and I totally blew it. That's okay. You can do it again. This isn't a race. So anyways, this is like the fifth time I had to try and do this. I was having technical difficulties yesterday, so I'm going to stop there with the uh, pre-birth plan portion of this, and hopefully I'll get another video up next week. You guys have a good weekend.